right there. This is it. Okay. Quite on set. What did we miss? <laughs> Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. We're here tonight at the Beachland Ballroom for the Ian Hunter and the Rant Band. And we yeah. have here the heart and soul of the Rant Band, drummer Steve Holly. Well, I'm the drummer, yes. <laughs> Whether I'm the heart and soul, I don't know. Thomas, you are the know. pounding heart okay. and soul of this band. All right. Talk good, about good. the sessions for this new album, yeah. When I'm President. Yeah, uh, beginning of the year, January, very beginning of the year, yeah. uh, up in uh, the valley in uh, New York. Uh, cut the whole record in three days, the basic track. I don't think the entire, all the business of finishing and mixing another two weeks, perhaps, total. Wow. Two weeks, yeah. And, you know, you can feel it. You can feel that, that groove. Do you like it better as a drummer when you're doing everything live like that instead of going back in and redoing your hi-hat? <laughs> well, I never used to do that much over dubbing, yeah. but it was it was the stuff that got changed when you were, you know, with, when you're out process. of the room. And, yeah, you know, and it's like you come back and you go, well, what the hell is that? That's not what I, that's not, where's the guitar, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, we touched on uh, things before we've spoken about, but, you know, it's, I miss the, the ability to go on the stage and play new material in before you record it. You know, I really miss that. That's where the band really gets the, the, the song together, right? I think it's right? true of everybody, you know. You, and so what happens is record it, even with this record, like now, with a few, within a few shows, we're playing things differently, and they're going, why the hell didn't we do it like that? But, but, and it's it different seems from it, the record, even. Yeah, and yeah. also because you see what the audience, how the audience yeah. reacts to yeah. it, and you go, well, this yeah. one doesn't cut it at all. You know, yeah. there's, uh, I'm not saying there's anything in the record that wouldn't have made it, but there's things that you would have changed to make it better. Always, and, uh, you know, but that never stops happening, you know. But you played mean, with some of the greats. I mean, you you've played with Elton John. You played with Paul McCartney. What's yeah. it like playing with Ian Hunter? You've been with him now for about five years, right? Yeah, on and off? He is one of the greats to me. You yeah, know. exactly. And, and, I mean, lyrically, certainly one of the best in the world, uh, as far as I'm concerned. No, 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 no doubt about it. And this is 25 years I've been doing this, and there's a reason for that. You know? Really? Yeah. I took a few years off, took three years off with Joe Cocker, for example, which he, he, he had a hard time forgiving me about. But <laughs> Ian has this thing about, like, uh, if I work with somebody else, he wants to know who they are and he wants to hear them. He wants to approve them, basically? Yeah, yeah, basically like, yeah. like a father approving his daughter's it's dates? A little bit like that. I never quite understood it, but I did actually play at the, here at the fabulous... Uh, uh, at the, ball, at the, the ballroom, beach you know, really? beach ballroom with Dar Williams. Dar Williams, uh, yeah. You know, um, who I adore. And he, and he said to me, well, who's this Dar chick then? And I said, well, you know, she's this great singer. He says, I want to hear her. Seriously? So, I'm serious. And I, and I didn't, he said, came to the studio and sat down and I played the album. And he listened, put his head down, listened to six or seven tracks. And then looks at me and said, she's very, she's good. Very good, sodder. <laughs> it was almost like he wanted to tell Mrs. Crap, "Why are you doing that for?" You know, but he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Couldn't it was do good it. stuff. So he appreciates, you know, that he said that that's good work. It's worthwhile. Go do it. You know. What do you What do you bring to a band as a drummer to drummer here? What 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 does the drummer? What do they count on for you? If you were talking to other drummers who who want aspire to what you've done, be, had a career in music, what does a drummer have to nail? In the game. You have to find, if you're talking about playing songs, I'm not necessarily talking about like, you know, if you're playing something improvisational jazz, that's not what I'm talking about. If you're playing a song, you've got to find the center of the song. The, the thing for me is what, I want to know what the song's about, I want to know what, it's, it, it, what the emotion should be, and then you find the core of it and you just don't play too much. You just support the tune, you know, and then if the, if the writer says to you, Here's a little bit. There's a little flourish here, you know, and then you listen to them. You know, that's it. Just keep your ears open. You know, it's just playing music is just listening. It's not like too many drummers for me. They just kind of play with total disregard for everything around them, as far as I can tell. <laughs> but you know, the great ones, they know how to carry the tune. Yeah. And that's really, you find the core. Sometimes all I do is 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 find like a tempo that feels slightly better than one we had. It might be a little faster, mm -hmm. a little bit. And I don't always get it right. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, either, when I'm present, a particular example where Ian was feeling it faster than I was, but I was thinking about it in a different format. You know, but it's great. You know, we we, we reach a we reach a place where it works. It's you a know, tendency to rush things on stage. Everyone's on adrenaline, adrenaline and excited. Adrenaline jumps up, and it, and it's it's. So you, you know, have to pull back, right? You've got to pull well, it down. I think if if it's there's a point about uh, it's it's okay to to have something be frantic for a while. But if the whole show's like that, mm -hmm. it's disconcerting mm -hmm. and the audience mm -hmm. can't relax and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, 
I, I like I like it to be in a comfort zone. I like there to be there. Here's the song. Here's the groove. Listen to the words. This is where the music is. But yeah. you know, and it's just you put it in a comfort zone. That's all I try and do. Right. You know. Right. You uh, understand you just got a, an award recently from the <laughs> Blues Society, which yeah, is which is fabulous. I'm, you know, it's a big honor it too. Is. You know, especially coming from London and not really any, no, knowing anything about the blues specifically. And I've been lucky enough to play with some great, great musicians, including Johnny Johnson, and you know, oh. was there with the, uh, and Buddy Gary. Guy and. Through G.E. Smith, you know, God wow. bless. You know, he's just, uh, he brought me into that thing and exposed me to a lot of music I had seen. And, and then, uh, you know, at the White House with B.B. King. And, wow. I mean, and, what, and then, <laughs> it, the, the thing is, is that you see bands playing the blues. I, I remember when I, I was working with Tommy Shaw and living in Chicago for a little while, you know, in and out of Chicago at CRC Studios, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you probably know that. But <laughs> Gary's going, yeah, yeah, he's nodding over here, yeah, it's cool. And uh, it's like you hear the blues in a bar in New York or Pittsburgh or London or wherever it is, and you think that's... But then you, when you play with the guys that, that really know what they're doing, yeah. and you go, well, wait a minute, this, this sounds and feels completely... And it just kind of... Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I've got to pay attention here mm -hmm. a little bit. Right, know? and you really don't know until you really get in and, and, and it's, yeah, it's, play it's with these. It's like players. Albert King can play one note and take you places you never thought of with somebody who's playing a million notes. And it and it's a tr it's true of every instrument. It's like, it's not it's not it's not what you do. It's how you apply it and how it, and how it blends. You know, as a performance. Speaking of awards, we were talking earlier. Why Ian Hunter's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah, now. I mean it's about time for God's sakes, you know. I mean, let me let me do that, you know. Let us let us let us get Ian into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and let's play a big New Year's Eve bash in Cleveland. I mean, don't you think so? I think so. Let's nominate him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve, thanks for taking time. I know you got Thomas, a gig here. It's a pleasure, man. It's, fun. it's always a pleasure to see you. And we'll I, see you next time you come into yeah, town. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Sounds great. I, I remember to call you this time as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hey, it's, oh, Thomas 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 Mulready. Yeah. <laughs> it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland. Oh, yeah.